everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over Graves' disease. This video is part of an NCLEX review series on the endocrine system, specifically the thyroid. In the previous video I went over hypo and hyperthyroidism, so if you're interested in those, check those out and I've been covering all the complications that go along with this, these disorders as well. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to hit on the causes, the signs and symptoms, and the nursing interventions of what you need to know about Graves' disease. And after you watch this video, go to my website, registernursrn.com, and take the free quiz that's going to test your knowledge on Graves' disease. So let's get started. First let's talk about the definition of Graves' disease. What is this condition? It is a common cause of hyperthyroidism due to an autoimmune condition. So the body is causing it on itself and it will present with excessive thyroid hormone in the body. First, let's talk about the basics of the thyroid gland because in Graves' disease, there's some things going on and if you can understand the basics, you can understand why this patient has these certain signs and symptoms and why we're providing these certain nursing interventions and giving them these certain medications. So let's talk about where the thyroid gland is. The thyroid gland is in where your trachea is, your windpipe. It's located right below the larynx where the laryngeal prominence is, um, the AKA, the Adam's apple on men. And it's a butterfly shaped gland and it produces thyroid hormone. What happens in the body, you have a negative feedback loop and your hypothalamus, anterior pituitary gland and your thyroid gland all work together. So let's talk about this for a second. What happens is that your hypothalamus releases TRH, which is thyroid tropin releasing hormone. And whenever that releases, your anterior pituitary gland picks that up and says, hey, I'm gonna release TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. And then this causes your thyroid gland to release thyroid hormone, T3 and T4. Now the issue with this condition is it's autoimmune. So what happens is that the body starts secreting something called TSI, which is thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. Now your body looks at this as TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone. So your body doesn't know the difference and it's being produced in excess. So your body is producing TSI and whenever it t produces that, your thyroid starts producing lots of T3 and T4. So that is like the path though of what's going on in this condition. Remember, TSI, thyroid stimulating um, immunoglobulin is being produced by your body and antibody and your body thinks it's TSH. So it's causing that thyroid gland to just produce lots of T3 and T4. Now, what does T3 and T4 do? Why does it cause so much problems on our body when we have too much of it? Well, let's look and see what it does normally. Normally, it helps us burn calories. Um, it determines how fast new cells replace dying cells, how fast we digest our food, um, stimulates our sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for our alertness, our responses, our reflexes, increases body temperature, our heart rate, and um, blood pressure, helps in brain development, especially in children, and the TSH regulation regulates that hormone. So, whenever you have too much of it, what's going to happen? Let's look at these signs and symptoms, because we already talked about the cause. The cause is the TSI being produced by the body, and your body thinks it's TSH. So what does it look like? Okay, as a nurse, you need to know these basic signs and symptoms in case you see them on an exam. Because with Graves' disease, there's some unique signs and symptoms that other disorders don't have that are causes of hyperthyroidism. Okay, so you're gonna have those typical signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism, but like the weight loss, the heat intolerance, the weight loss again, T3 and T4 helps you burn calories. You're burning them at a rapid rate with Graves' disease. So you're gonna have weight loss, heat intolerance, T3 and T4 increase your temperature, so you're not gonna be able to tolerate heat, they're gonna be sweaty. Um, increased heart rate and blood pressure, again, your sympathetic nervous system is in an overdrive, so your heart's pumping fast, your blood pressure's up. Diarrhea, again, remember, it plays a role in how fast food uh, goes through our intestines, so we're not digesting all that nutrients, it's gonna come out watery. Irritable, they're gonna have smooth skin and hair due to that increased blood flow. But the unique signs and symptoms that you want to um, remember are the following. 
they're going to have eye changes. Not all patients with Graves' disease, but some of them will, where they have the protruding eyeballs. It's where the eyeballs are opened up really large, and it looks like they have a surprised look on their face, but it's constant. They can also have a gorder of the neck, and the reason for this is due to overstimulation of the thyroid gland. Remember, TSH, all, really TSI, is producing, causing the thyroid hormone, thyroid gland to be producing T3 and T4, and it's constant. So you're going to start getting swelling of the thyroid gland that will look like a gorder. Also, they can have pretibial myxedema, which is red swelling of the skin on the lower legs and the feet that have like this orange peel texture to it. And this can progress to the face, the chest, and the arms. So as a nurse, what are you gonna do for this patient nursing intervention wise? One thing you wanna do is you wanna monitor their heart rate because they're gonna be tacky, monitor their blood pressure, it's gonna be high, and monitor their weight because they're at risk for nutrient issues because they're burning calories really rapidly. You want to make sure that they're on a high calorie diet, getting the proper amount of calories. Keep the environment cool and quiet because this patient, remember their sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or, fight or flight response, is an overdrive. So they are stimulated, they're irritable, and they need a calm, cool, quiet environment. Next, you're going to, as a nurse, you're going to be responsible for educating them about medications they're going to be started on, the treatments, Treatments include radi radioactive iodine and thyroidectomy, and you're gonna monitor for side effects um, because of those medications, which are anti-thyroid medications. They may be started on beta blockers. And you're also gonna watch for thyroid storm. We talked about that in uh, the previous video where the thyroid storm is where they, um, it's either due to untreated or um, they're not taking their medication properly and people with Graves' disease can enter into thyroid storm. And this is where you're, you get severe um, hyperthermia, their heart rate is increased tachycardia, blood pressure, and it's life-threatening to the point of death. So if you don't know about that condition, cards should be popping up and you can access that video. So first, let's talk about the medications that these patients are started on. Okay, so with Graves' disease, we have an elevated amount of thyroid hormone. So what would be a goal? What would we want to do to treat it? The physician is probably going to order anti-thyroid hormone, which is going to help decrease thyroid hormones. Um, most common, that's usually prescribed by physicians, it's called tapazole, also known as methamazole. Uh, it tends to have fewer side effects than the other medication we'll go over here in a second. However, it cannot be used in the first trimester of pregnancy. Another drug is called PTU, propothiouracil. And this, if a woman is pregnant in her first trimester and she has this condition, she'll be started on this because it's safe during the first trimester. However, um, there is um, problems with liver failure with this drug. So watch liver enzymes. Another thing that, you need to watch for with these anti-thyroid hormones, not common side effects, but it can happen, especially what they love to ask you on tests, is agranulocytosis or thrombocytopenia. So if you see those options, that is a side effect of these medications. Now, as a nurse, you're always educating your patient about medications they're taking. So what are some education pieces with the anti-thyroid hormone medicines? Um, never stop taking these abruptly. These medications can take some time to work. So the patient may think, I don't need this, it's not even working, I'm gonna quit taking it. So tell them, it takes a while to start working, don't ever quit taking it, because you can go into thyroid storm where you have untreated hyperthyroidism and you went into thyroid storm. Um, take at the same time every day, watch for those signs and symptoms of thyroid storm, which is fever, uh, feeling really fast heart rate, chest pain, things like that. Uh, avoid foods rich in iodine, because remember, the thyroid loves iodine because it helps them make T3 and T4. Well, if you're taking in a bunch of iodine, you're gonna be producing even more. So, watch foods that are like from the sea, like kelp, which is seaweed, or um, dairy products, eggs, things like that. They're high in iodine. Uh, no salicylates, which is aspirin. These increase thyroid hormones, so don't take aspirin. And watch for signs of toxicity. We're giving them antithyroid hormone to decrease their thyroid hormone. Well, sometimes
sometimes you can decrease it so much that you send them into hypothyroidism. And watch for signs and symptoms of that, like bradycardia, feeling cold all the time, low blood pressure, things like that with that. Now let's look at the treatment of with radioactive iodine and thyroidectomy. Another thing the patient could be started on medication-wise are called beta blockers. Why beta blockers? Remember, with this condition, we have an tachycardia, we have high blood pressure, we have heat intolerance. And what that does, these will help prevent the effects of T3 and T4 on the body. So um, a popular one is Enderol. So it'll decrease that heart rate, um, decrease that blood pressure, help that patient with that heat intolerance. However, remember, we talked about this in the hypertension video in Clex Review, that whenever you get beta blockers, remember, they're not for patients who have a history of asthma or bronchospasms because it can exacerbate that, make that come out again. And you have to watch giving this medication, beta blockers, in patients who are diabetic because it can mask the typical signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, like the tachycardia, the sweating, the things like that that normally come with that. So you want to educate your diabetic patient if they are started on this. Another treatment is radioactive iodine. Normally how this is given, it's given in like a capsule. Patient swallows it, the iodine, remember thyroid loves iodine. But this is special iodine, it goes to the thyroid and what it does is it destroys the thyroid gland over time. So go here, destroy that. However, this is not for patients who are pregnant or nursing due to the radioactive material that they'll be getting. There are, there may be some side effects with this, they're usually mild, however they can have iodism known as, which can present as taste changes with a metal taste in the mouth, nausea, or swollen um, saliva glands. A surgical treatment for this um, is a thyroidectomy where they go in and remove the thyroid gland. And um, some things you need to watch out for this as the nurse, whenever they remove the thyroid gland, you wanna monitor the patient for thyroid storm. Typically now, this isn't as common, patients entering into this because they're starting on a lot of pre-op meds and during and after the procedure, but thyroid storm because whenever they remove this gland, manipulate it, it could cause a lot of T3 and T4 to leak into the body, which will produce excessive amounts of these hormones and um, cause the patient to go into a life-threatening complication where they're gonna go into hyperthermia, fast heart rate, um, could lead to congestive heart failure, myocardial infarction, things like that. So monitor for that. You also wanna monitor if they've had a thyroidectomy, the calcium level. Why the calcium level? Remember, in the thyroid gland, are these little glands called parathyroid. The parathyroid, what does it do? It regulates calcium. So whenever they went in here, removed this thyroid gland, they could have damaged the parathyroids. And whenever you damage that, you may have hypocalcemia. So monitor the calcium level. Next, monitor for respiratory distress. Because of the nature of the site, it's gonna be on the throat, they could have excessive swelling, they could have bleeding, which could cause them to go in respiratory distress. So you wanna keep them in semi-fowler's position and keep a trait kit, oxygen, and suction at bedside in case of emergency. And also, whenever the patient is coughing and deep breathing, which is important to prevent pneumonia, you wanna teach them to splint their neck when they cough so they don't put extra pressure on that side. So that is about Graves' disease. Now go take that free quiz on my website, registernursrn.com, and check out the other videos that are part of this series. And thank you so much for watching, and please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.